All right, Congressman, it has been uh, an adventurous few years in Washington. <laughs> why, uh, why go for a few more? Yeah, well, listen, it's been an honor to serve the last two years. Definitely learned a lot. And most of what I learned just comes from listening to people in Northeast Wisconsin. I still think, notwithstanding a lot of the problems we have uh, at the federal level and the dysfunction in D.C., we're lucky to live in a part of the country uh, where people are still nice to each other, still means a lot to be a good neighbor, and I try and take those values to D.C. every day. And so while well, I'm proud of some of what I've been able to accomplish, there's still a lot more to get done. I don't think Congress should be a career. I still intend to treat it like a short-term deployment, but I'm just going to work hard as hard as possible to get stuff done. Awesome. Looking back, what are some of the things you're, you're proud of that you've done so far? Sure. Well, certainly when it comes to things that are really important for Northeast Wisconsin, we've had some wins, some of wh uh, which just don't get any headlines. For example, we were able to defend and stick up for funding for the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. And if you care about keeping clean water, keeping a healthy environment here in Northeast Wisconsin, that program is absolutely critical. We've been able to have a lot of success in terms of reforming the Veterans Administration to make sure those who've served and put their lives on the line are getting the care that they need uh, coming home, making sure that if uh, employees in the VA aren't performing, that, they, uh, that the Secretary of the VA has the authority to fire them, protecting whistleblowers, making sure the choice program works. Certainly the rebuild and modernization of the American military is something we all take for granted, but it's incredibly critical at a time when we're facing increasing threats from China, from Russia, from terrorist groups around the world. And so those are just a few examples of some serious things that have happened. If given two more years, what would be some things you'd look to accomplish? Well, I think health care is a critical, critical issue. The costs continue to go up and up. I will concede to my friends on the left that the system was broken prior to Obamacare, but I would argue Obamacare has made it worse. And so that's why I'm proud to have introduced a piece of legislation with a Democrat from Colorado working across uh, the aisle in order to require transparency for health care pricing. Because it's my fundamental belief that until we as consumers and patients understand what exactly we're paying for when we interact with the health care system, we're never going to bring costs down and power is going to stay concentrated in the big insurance companies and the big hospitals. We need to shift power down to the patients, put the power in the hands of families and, and individual patients, and that's how we can really reform our health care system. What has it been like for you seeing that health care debate and so contentious and, yeah. and it almost got through um, a change to the, to the Affordable Care Act? What's just been sure. bad sure. for you? Yeah, it really worries me what I'm seeing now in, in the election. I mean, I think every year it seems like more money gets spent on cheesy or ominous TV ads and we don't actually get a better choice as voters and individual citizens. And the problem is if you are willing to demagogue the health care issue, all you're doing is making it less likely that actual, real, meaningful reform is going to be done. In other words, if you're willing to go out there and spend millions of dollars trying to convince people that the other side is going to take away their health care, uh, then you're actually making it harder for us to reform the system. We need men and women of good faith on both sides to come together and bring their best ideas to the table, and we need to have a debate about what's working and what isn't. And I think we in Wisconsin can protect people with pre-existing conditions while also making sure we bring costs down and giving individual patients more choice going forward. What do you think is stopping that debate from happening between Democrats and Republicans on health care and on other issues? Sure. Well, I think you, you got to look at the overall political environment. I mean, I talked to my colleagues who've been there uh, much longer than I have, and they say you'd have to go back to the late 60s to find a time when the country was this divided. And it's not just D.C. I think D.C. is downstream from the division we see in our own communities, right? And social media has made it worse. Uh, the, the promise of social media that it was going to break down barriers and bring everyone together, I think the opposite has happened, right? It's allowed us to isolate ourselves or only surround ourselves with people that share our worldview rather than challenging it. And we're losing that sense of community, that sense of family, that sense of, hey, we can disagree about politics, but at the end of the day, we're all Americans. We're in it together, and we need to be able to resolve our disputes peacefully through the political process. Shifting gears a little bit, what can Washington do for the Northeast Wisconsin economy? Yeah, well, one of the things we can do, I think, is have the humility to devolve more power and authority back down to Northeast Wisconsin. I mean, it's my fundamental belief that I mean, we have a unique way of life in Northeast Wisconsin, I think it's better than ever around the country, but I'm biased. And so I want us to be able to solve our problems at the local level. That's also the best way that we as citizens can hold officials accountable. And we can experiment through the laboratories of democracy um, with what works and what doesn't. But there are some unique 
things that the federal government has a role to play. I mentioned national defense earlier. That's something the states can't do on their own. We have to continue rebuilding our military. And I really worry that we're going to fumble that if we don't continue it uh, down uh, the road that we've, we, we've begun to go down with the last two years of investing in our military. Certainly when it comes to infrastructure, the federal government has a role to play in partnership with the states. Um, but there are a lot of different areas where we just need people to kind of work together and get stuff done. That's why I've been so focused on congressional reform in my first two years in Congress, because until we get that institution working again, I don't care who wins the election, we're going to continue repeating the same mistakes over and over again. We got to get Congress to do its basic job and the elected representatives of the American people actually working for a change. On the military, what do you think could be the greatest threat, so to say, for the United States? I think China is by far the biggest long-term threat that we face. I mean, uh, there are other threats we face, whether it's from Russia, whether it's from terrorism, but China is by far the most comprehensive threat. You look at the investments they've made in cyber. You look at the way in which they've infiltrated our own country with influence operations. They've made investments in universities across the United States. You look at the way in which they're throwing money around all over the world, basically trapping countries in debt and building massive infrastructure pro uh, projects in countries like Sri Lanka and thereby getting access to critical bases and ports, making investments in the Arctic. China is, is using an all of society approach to rebuilding and also challenging our power. Their explicit goal is to push us out of the Indo-Pacific region, perhaps allowing us to keep Hawaii, but everything west of that would be under Chinese influence. They want to be the sole hegemon in the Indo-Pacific region, and they have a fundamentally different way of life than the United States. They offer a different model. And so I tend to think we are sort of at um, where we were in the beginning of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. Uh, that's, a, that's a good analogy to where we are with China right now. We need to come together and figure out what is our long-term strategy? What investments do we need to make right now so we can win this competition and that we, working with our allies, i.e. the free world, can prevail and guarantee another 100 years of stability and security and liberty and prosperity? I was going to ask, who, who can help with that? Who should the United States look for to be another leader in that? Sure. Well, one of the things we take for granted is that our alliance system is really the best way of preserving and extending our power, precisely because the U.S. can't do it all by itself. We don't have infinite resources. So we have an immense system of alliances. It starts with what's called our Five Eyes Partners. Uh, these are the countries with which we share basically everything. Uh, Canada, uh, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and then it builds from there, whether it's through NATO or some, some other alliances we have in the Indo-Pacific with Japan and other countries. And we need to be in the business of, of building that. We also have some allies that may be problematic at times. Obviously, we're having a debate over uh, Saudi Arabia right now. But we have to work with countries and hopefully push them on a better path and get them to take ownership of their own security and stability so that we don't have to do it. I think where we could invest more in the future, particularly as it pertains to countering China, is in countries like India. India is the largest democracy in the world. Um, they have different long-term interests than China. They're not ready yet to form an explicit alliance with us, but I think there's more we can be doing to partner with them. But even countries that it seems unthinkable we could work with, we're starting to work with more now. Countries like Vietnam. I was in Vietnam last year. I mean, America has a high approval rating in Vietnam, if you can believe it. And the Vietnamese are no friends of the Chinese right now. So we've actually sold them some warships. There's a lot of little things we could do to start building an alliance structure that would effectively counter China over the long term. Finally, you mentioned the waterways here in northeast yeah. Wisconsin. How important is it? What does it take to preserve those and, and all that comes with it here for people? It's critical. I mean, listen, we, we take for granted the idea that we can just turn on the tap and drink clean water. And you want to talk about a real public health crisis. I mean, when that stops, and certainly we've seen it in places like Michigan, that would be it. So we can't get complacent. And obviously, economically, our waterways, whether you know, you're a fisherman or you just enjoy going up to Door County and being out uh, on the water, I mean, it's, it's just a part of our culture here in Northeast Wisconsin. So it's absolutely essential. I'm a conservative and I consider myself a conservationist. I think there's a rich tradition going back to Teddy Roosevelt and we absolutely have to protect and preserve and pass on to the next generation this gift we've been given. That's why I've been proud to continue uh, the Save the Bay initiative where we're bringing together local stakeholders, farmers, environmental activists, DNR officials to figure out, okay, we know agriculture needs to thrive in order for Wisconsin to be healthy. But we also, at the same time, want to make sure that our farmers are implementing the best practices to take care of the land, to take care of the, wa the water. And we shouldn't have to choose between a healthy economy and a healthy environment. Lastly, a week to go now. What uh, does this week look like? Uh, just an all-out sprint. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm lucky. I mean, what I get to do every day is... Uh,
just talk to everybody around Northeast Wisconsin. I mean, basically from when I wake up to late at night, I'm just going all around Northeast Wisconsin talking to people and um, I learn a ton. And, and I will say it's almost a paradox because as you referenced at the beginning, there's a lot of division in Washington, D.C. Certainly the last week in our country, there's been some troubling things that have happened and we should all reflect on, on that and how we can improve that. But I still think you can't help but go around this part of the country and be anything other than grateful for how blessed we are to be Americans, but Wisconsinites in particular. I mean, we have so many good people doing so many good things. I mean, I'm gonna you know, say goodbye and then welcome back the honor flight that's gonna leave from Brown County in a couple days. I just nominated a bunch of awesome kids to go to the service academies. I mean, I couldn't get into these service academies if I applied today. It's unbelievable. I mean, we just have so many good things and I, I'm just proud to represent this area and I, I wanna do my best to, re to reflect those values.